Welcome to Doug's Open Mic, a podcast spotlighting local musicians, bands, and songwriters. Hi, everybody. This is Doug's Open Mic. So this is a continuation of our... I don't want to call it an interview. It's more than an interview. We're going to call it an interview, but it's not really. <laughs> but uh, with Craig Edwards, who is a local musician from Mystic, Connecticut. Um, since it's a, uh, a different episode, we're, we're going to kind of go over a little bit of some of the stuff that uh, we went over last time, just in case somebody's just tuning into this one and didn't hear number three. So, Craig, introduce yourself and what you do. I'm a mu- professional musician playing traditional American roots music based in mystic connecticut uh i i play and teach fiddle guitar mandolin banjo and button accordion in a number of different roots music styles sometimes i'll say uh it's the ab it's the alphabet of roots music i do appalachian bluegrass blues uh uh, cajun celtic right on up to swing and zydeco so um and as a longtime student, he's very good. He's very good. As I said before, patient of Job, and a, a very uh, a style that's very what's the word I want? Not autocratic. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a that's a hell of an endorsement. I think you're talking about me as a teacher there. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, as you said in the last episode, he doesn't say this is what we're learning today. He says, you know, what do you yeah, want to do? Wanna, what do you want to learn? Yep. Uh, the, the, yeah, and what I, what, I, what I like to do, you know, I, w- I want people to understand the way music is put together and the way it's structured, but just learning scales and chords is kind of dry. So what, I'll, what I try to do is take a piece of music and have you learn it, but as you're learning it, you're absorbing the relationships between the chords and chords and scales and, and how that works. So I use use the music that you're interested in learning to teach you more broadly about music. Okay. So this 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 particular podcast is gonna focus on more the old time music. The last one was more about sea shanties and mystic. This one's gonna be about old time music, which is really Craig's number one love. Um so and this is where I kind of met Craig. We, we we go through this all the time. How how long ago was it? Fifteen years ago, maybe. Oh uh, no, it's longer than that. Uh, longer uh, than that. I, um, You're an old man, Doug. Let's I see. Know. Yeah, uh, uh, close. Uh, I think it's more than twenty years now. More than 20 actually, years. so so it, so there's this what we call the session that what was a mystic and now with New London, which every Monday night. A group of people would get together and would play old time music. We we started when I started going there. It was at the Daniel Packer Inn in Mystic, and we would go down there, and it'd be I'm gonna say somewhere around six people. Sometimes it might be four. Sometimes it might be twelve. You know. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> I mean, almost always it would be a couple fiddle players, a banjo player, a mandolin player, too many guitar players. Um. And we just play old time music from like nine o'clock till they closed, and and back in those days, actually, actually back in those days it was we started more like ten ten thirty because yeah, at the yeah, Dan- at the Captain Daniel Packer Inn you couldn't start playing until the last people in the bar had finished the whatever food they'd ordered. That's right. We, we, we so we'd play late. from ten thirty until closing, which was one one thirty. And then and then then we would go outside in the summer and play outside till the police kicked us out. That's right. That's <laughs> nice. Right. Now, uh, how do you? What would you define as old timey music? Old, uh, so old time music uh, <laughs> is a term that's used for the fiddle banjo based music of the American South and and uh, Southwest um, that u- uses uh, fiddle tunes. <coughs> the the melody is called fiddle tunes, and uh, the accompanying banjo styles. Um, and string band music that where you'll incorporate guitars and 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 uh, mandolins. People will often hear it and say, "Oh, that's bluegrass." But bluegrass actually is a a more modern style. It's really sort of taking that the materials of old time music and treating it almost like jazz, where people take solos based on the progression. Right. In old time music, it's more social music. So it's not about look at me, look what I can do, but about 
how can I make this whole ensemble playing this one tune together really sound good? And and uh, what do I need to leave out so that every every part is heard and meshes just right? That's uh, and and there's there's there are singing you know there's songs and 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 harmonies too, but uh, bluegrass just a, a little more arranged and, and sophisticated in that regard. Awesome. Um, will you guys play me something? Yeah. yeah. What do you, what so do we'll do? do the possum one. What is that? The possum on a rail. And not possum on the other one. The one we did on the blue boom jack there. Oh, uh, Polecat Blues. Polecat Blues. Sure. That's it. Polecat Blues. This is a tune from a, a North Carolina fiddler called named Bent, Benton Flippin'. Typical old time song, the Polecat Blues. So the guitar guy doesn't get a, so, you know, the guitar guy's role is just to put the rhythm down. You know, if, in, in old time music, if you if you want to do solos, don't you should play time. bluegrass. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't go to old time sessions. So so for me, for those those old time sessions, I was just starting out guitar back there, and I found that, and for me, they were. So such a great way to to really get my chords down because because go every Monday night and play three straight hours, and and um, old time music is doesn't have a lot of weird chords. It's mostly you know normal type guitar chords, and and you just play them three. I mean, I'm just not a guy that can practice much. You know, I I would never sit down and practice three hours ever. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, <laughs> And, he goes, but, and the other thing about and and, and uh, we'll go into this more another thing. If you're an inspiring musician, if you can find places to play out and other people, it's the best possible thing to get better. You you know you, you can only get so far on the couch. I mean, once you get out, first of all, you know people will show you different things and and you'll learn different things. But the other thing for me, anyways, is like okay, I'm gonna be playing. You know. On the session Monday, and uh, you know there was a song last week that I didn't quite get. So all of a sudden, like on on Wednesday, I'll, I'll get, get the guitar out, work on it an hour. Or Friday, I'll be, work on it an hour. Maybe I'm thinking something else. And that's I wouldn't do that if I wasn't going. You know, it, it's kind of like if you go to school, you know, there's a test yeah. come come. You know, it's like oh, I guess I better study. Yeah. 
The other aspect of old time music is that it's it's a social music for the musicians as well as for people listening to it. the The role of each instrument is pretty much defined, but you don't have to have a particular group of instruments. Like if you want to play a Beatles song. You can do it with a bunch of different instruments, but if you want it to sound like a Beatles song, you need two guitars, a bass, and drums. Right. With old-time music, if you're just playing the fiddle part, you're playing everything. If you're playing fiddle and banjo, you're still playing everything. If you add a guitar, it's everything. If you add a mandolin, it's everything. Add another fiddler. Add two more fiddlers. Add a bass. Take almost any one of those instruments out of that larger ensemble once you got a guitar, you usually want to keep it, but not even that necessarily. And it's it's the whole music. You're not missing anything. You're just doing another rendition of that tune in that style. So musicians who have never met each other but share this repertoire of tunes can get together, as, as I do... Um, frequently in the summer I'll go to fiddlers conventions and you can spend all night playing with people you've never met before but you all know the same tunes and every every jam session is just another exploration of that music and it's complete what's it like to be in a community like that because it feels like a really communal experience to be able to just pick up and go play somewhere it is a really uplifting experience. I, I have friends from all over the country that I see maybe a couple of times a year. But when we spend time together doing that, you know, we're playing music and then we're taking breaks and talking and having a drink and then, then it's time to eat and somebody will, will make a meal for, for, for everybody at their campsite. This is all camping outside, right? And, uh, and, and then maybe somebody will throw down a couple pieces of plywood and, and you'll have a square dance, and and it just impromptu, the way that that people made music time out of mind until recording was invented and made people feel like there was only one way to play a particular tune, which was that definitive recording, and made people feel like playing music live is sort of strange and awkward compared to listening to a recording. Right. Yeah. And the other thing I said about old time music is too is like we build it as. Um, Music you can listen to and have a conversation. You know what I mean? You know, it's it's like if while you're playing, you know, while we're playing, you know, we're not super loud. We're you know a thing, and, and you know what? You don't have to really pay super attention to us. We're not doing anything, you know, jazzy or anything like that. So if you want to kind of talk to your friends, you know, go ahead. It, it's a it's a social thing, right. right? It's it's you know, I've gone to great concerts of old time music, and and especially with you know solo players who are kind of getting deep inside a solo tradition, it's nice just to listen to them. But if you want social music for a house party, there is nothing better because it's lively and engaging. But the purpose of it isn't to focus on the lyrics or the solo. Right. Yeah. So you can, you know, you can hire an old time band to come play your house party and you'll be guaranteed to have just great, enlivening music because that's what it was invented to do. Craig, are you available for house parties? I am available for house parties. Yeah. How would somebody contact you? They would email me at fiddlecraig, F-I-D-D-L-E-C-R-A-I-G at gmail.com. Awesome. We'll yeah. put that in the description of the episodes. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, and and um, again, if anybody's looking for other house but you know, Craig and I know a vast array of of musicians that do all types of music. So I mean, if you wanted to have a party with like an just an acoustical folk guy with maybe a you know a bass or something, we know him. Um, you know, it's like and house parties. You'd be surprised. We're not that expensive. <laughs> <laughs> We're not that expensive. You know, you know, and we have a great time. There's one in Stonington we go to every year that she just has us back every year. We. Have, what a great time. And yeah. for us musicians, we do the bars because that's kind of, I think Greg calls it wholesale. You know, that's what we, that's what, you know, you get, you know, people, you meet people and stuff like that. But the stuff that we really, 
house parties are the best. You go there, they say, hey, you want something to eat? You want something to drink? Go ahead, here's, here's your thing. You know, here's a sit down. You know, after you play for a while, okay, take a break, you know, and then you talk yeah. to people. So they, they're great. And in most situations, as Doug said, what we do is, is plenty loud enough to hear, but you can still have a conversation in a, in a regular voice. It's so enjoyable, too, to listen to. Like, I've never heard um, uh, an old time song that I didn't enjoy. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Um, and uh, I kind of, um, as we were talking in between recording episodes, uh, I've, I kind of grew up listening to th- um, this music all the time because um, my uh, a good friend and Sunday school teacher is um, somebody who plays a lot of old time music and, uh, and, and, and stuff um, that you actually know. Yeah. Uh, which was cool and a weird coincidence, but um, it's it's always been fascinating and and fantastic, and you can play it in any setting, you know, it's appropriate for any setting, um, and it's just it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So I recommend people um hiring for uh, house parties and and anything like that. Mm. Want to do another one? With Let's do another. This will be what? in the key of A. Key of A. Um, One of the great things about these old time tunes is is the array of names they have for them because they're just melodies. Oh, they, <laughs> they they a lot of not all of them, but but uh, many of them don't have words that you sing to them. It's just a melody. So the the name of the tune helps you remember it. Um, and and you've got names like the hog went through the fence, yoke and all, or you married my daughter but you didn't. Or uh, dust uh, on the windowsill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like an exciting song, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> but uh, this this one I'll play is, is called Booth Shot Lincoln. Lincoln. He sure did. He sure did. <laughs> you are an incredible musician, Greg. <laughs> oh, this is only the half of it. He, 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 I just, know. he, he discussed it. You can play the bass, you can play the electric guitar, you can play the button accordion, you can play the mandolin, you can play. But I only brought a fiddle and a guitar today. <clears throat> um. So 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 continuing on with the uh session story. So we had the DPI for a long time. Then they, then we moved to the Johns over Mystic, and we were there for uh, 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 a dozen years, maybe a dozen years. You know, so old, old blue co- blue collar bar, a lot of fun, more space than the DPI, yeah. which we which, which we enjoyed. Um, they have closed, unfortunately. They uh, closed closed right before Christmas. Right before Christmas. Oh, like. And and I didn't know. I I, I just kind of walked in with my guitar, and all of a sudden, I I could tell it was a little different vibe in the place. I was like, <laughs> I was like, what's what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, we've been closed for three weeks. No, no, I'm we're closing yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy. It's like, it's, it's, it's like everybody's there. And, and and it was kind of funny with the alcohol. I was like, so I didn't buy. So for, during the night, it's like. Whatever alcohol they had, if they ran out, that was that was it. You know, I mean, later, you know, I would say later on, it was like in the beginning you might be able to get them Jameson, but at the end you might be able to get 
Seagram's Crown Royal or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we moved over to The Social on Bank Street in New London, which is where we are now. Yeah. And, and uh, the, in addition to the change of place, we also changed the time. We now start playing about 6.30, 7 o'clock at The Social and, and wind down around 10. So uh, much, much earlier at both, both Captain Daniel Packer Inn and John's, we were starting 10, 1030, and now we're finishing at the time we used to start. You got you going, uh, it's daylight out. It's yeah. very weird. <laughs> but it's a, it's a beautiful place. They, got, they have good food and a huge selection of, of interesting beers and whiskeys and, and other liquor and uh, uh, plenty of seating. Um, great acoustics. We we uh, it's the best acoustics of any spot we've been in. We're we're playing kind of up along the big glass window that fronts the street, but that seems to reflect the sound right down to the other end of the bar. So it, it's just the right volume everywhere. And uh, again, you know, plenty of room. So come on down some Monday night and hear some of this music with a full ensemble. Yep. So it's at the Social Kitchen on Bank Street. Just look it or up. Just the social. It's Is just it the, the social. social. No, just the social. All right. I stand corrected. <laughs> so, um, how many of you usually play now? It varies from four or five to eight or nine. Okay. We should um, we should get everybody. Well, you know, not in this room, obviously, but when we're out in the studio, uh, we should you know try to get a bunch of people to 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 come on the show and oh, that would um, be fun. And play, you know, the big band setup, yeah, and uh, just wall to wall music for the oh, for the whole show. I mean, maybe we could try. If you and I talk, then maybe we'll do a, a field trip. Yeah, maybe, uh, we, uh, maybe we'll do a field recording. Yeah, we'll, field recording. we have a field recorder. We can do that. Yeah. Hey, Mister Craig, go ahead and give us a guitar soloish thing. All right. So, one of my other early inspirations. Uh, my family was visiting uh, one of my dad's friends, and he had a big record collection. And I, I ended up in, in the room with the record player all by myself and just started throwing different records on. I was about eight or nine years old. And it was the first time I was on a Smithsonian collection of classic jazz, I think, um, on the first LP in the collection. They had one cut by Robert Johnson, which was this one. It was the first time I'd heard him. And it just went right through me. I, 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 I was completely transfixed by this piece of music. And many years later, I learned to play it. It's a, one of his sort of supernatural blues called Hellhound on My Trail. Gotta keep moving Got to keep Gotta keep moving Blues falling down like hell Blues falling down like hell And the days keep on minding me There's a hellhound on my trail Hellhound on my trail Hellhound on my trail Hellhound on my trail If today was Christmas Eve Today was Christmas Christmas Eve, tomorrow it was Christmas Day, oh, wouldn't we have a time, baby? If today was Christmas Eve, tomorrow it was Christmas Day, mm -hmm. I would still need my sweet rider, pass my time away, pass my time away. Pass my time away, pass my time away. She put hot foot powder all around my door. Mm -hmm. She put hot foot powder all around my door. Mm -hmm. Kiss me in a trembling mind. I can tell the wind is rising Leaves trembling on the trees Leaves trembling on the trees 
I can tell the wind is rising Leaves trembling on the trees Leaves trembling on the trees I still need my sweet rider To keep me company Keep me company Keep me company Keep me company All right, so we got to the social kitchen, and we did that. The social. The social. Just the social, man. I, just the social. I, why did I think that? Um, it's like the producer thing. I don't know. <laughs> um, is this a good place to cut this one, and then we'll do one more, maybe? Um, this is, I mean, we can, you know, go a little bit. Uh, before before we do, um, I just want to talk a little bit about lessons. Mm. So um, you teach everything you play, or... I, I, I teach everything I play kind of regularly. I, I play several other instruments beyond the ones I teach, but, uh, but more casually. So uh, uh, fiddle, I, I, and I teach uh, old-time Irish Cape Breton blues improvisation. Um, I teach uh, guitar in a number of styles, finger style and flat picking, um, blues, bluegrass, uh, old-time honky tonk swing acoustic and electric i teach banjo which i didn't bring one but uh, uh mostly claw hammer style but also some two and three finger picking styles and uh mandolin and i've i've taught a few people to play button accordion not the hugest demand for that uh that that particular lesson but that, that that's all, all pretty much strictly cajun and zydeco style what i would teach on that awesome Cool. Um, and if people want to uh, do that, they can find you at fiddlecraig at gmail.com. That is correct. Please right. shoot me it's an like email. It's like a steel trap up here. Yeah. Um, do you have uh, like uh, videos on YouTube or a Facebook page or yes, website? Uh, it's it's the fiddlecraig at Wix site, W-I-X-S-I-T-E um, dot, dot com. com. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, or not Fiddle Craig at Wix site, just Fiddle Craig, I think it's slash Wix site. Yeah. Yeah. Just just Google search Fiddle Craig. And yeah. I'm that, sure it'll I, come I up. Should, I should come up. Yeah. Um, all right. And uh, you guys, Monday nights at the social, yeah. not the social not kitchen, the, Doug. The social. Uh, Monday nights at the social. What time was that at it again? That starts around six thirty, seven o'clock. And they serve great, great uh, dinner. So come, come, grab some dinner, uh, have a couple of beers. 50, Fifty different tap beers. Last I knew. Yeah, and uh, right, and and it's Monday night, but our slogan is Monday is the new Saturday. So don't <laughs> hold back. Yeah, awesome. And of course, uh, last but not least, you know, hire um, hire old time music for your parties and your house parties, and it's summer. So cookouts, oh my cookouts. God. and yeah, and and you know, we've been talking about old time music, but I play old time music, blues, Texas swing, Cajun, Zydeco, honky tonk. So if you're having a pig roast or a barbecue, this is the appropriate Act. music yeah, for it. Anything, and uh, please give me give me a shout. I love to play those kinds of things. We'll make it. We'll make it feel like your food and your party are right where they originated. All right. All right. So that's it for this one. And um, off we go. Have a great day. This episode of Doug's Open Mic is brought to you in part by Mystic River Acupuncture, ancient medicine for a modern world. Come down and try their safe and effective methods to improve your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Use them for prevention or from quicker healing from injury and illness. Their clinic offers a wide range of services from acupuncture, Chinese herbs, therapeutic massage, cupping, magnet therapy, and so much more. Doug, you have a long history with Kathleen Poole, the owner. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about why she's uniquely qualified to help your listeners? So I've known Kathleen for many years. She's a fellow musician, and as such, she's uniquely qualified. She knows the musician ailments. We do a lot of repetitive motions. And she's got some solutions for that. I've even seen her at 
various gigs that I've been at, taking musicians into a back room and uh, fix them up right then. Kind of repairs on site. That's awesome. And uh, not only that, of course, she can help. She has 30 years experience in the business. And um, if you're wondering, the clinic also has senior days and community acupuncture clinics. So really, whatever you're looking for, they can help. And whatever your situation is, they can help. The clinic is conveniently located in the city of Groton near I-95, Route 1, and Thames Street. For more information, call 860 448 Six seven six six, or visit them at mysticriveracupuncture.com. Today's show is also brought to you by Perks and Corks, located at 62 High Street. Perks and Corks is the heart of downtown Westerly, with their world-famous martinis and six nights of live music every week. You can also check out Perks every day starting at 11 a.m. for a great selection of coffees, breakfast sandwiches, and eclectic grilled cheeses. D.U.G. here. Thought I'd Throw a couple comments in. I'm a longtime fan of Perks. Their open mic is fantastic. Every Monday, 9 o'clock, come on down. They have a full sound system there. Gene Paris will set you right up. And as I've mentioned on other shows, it's a great place to start moving from the couch to the professional stage for aspiring musicians. You might even see me play there on occasion. Number two, their martinis are very well received. I'm a beer guy myself, but they look very tasty. Almost dangerously tasty, if you know what I mean. And number three, they have music six days a week. The only day they do not have it is on Tuesday. And they have some of the best talent around. Very acoustical, very singer songwriter I can guarantee you'll like it. All right. For more information on upcoming musicians, follow them on Facebook or go to perksandcorks.com. Today we also have a new sponsor, Boneyard Barbecue in Ashaway on 15 Frontier Road. This place is amazing. It's a classic barbecue joint. They have everything you could hope for. World famous chicken wings, ribs, um, just a fantastic menu. They are a great place to host events if you're looking for that sort of thing. And it's a wonderful place to go if you're in the Ashaway area every single night of the week. On Mondays and Thursdays they have karaoke. Tuesdays is DJ Trivia, sometimes hosted by yours truly. And then on Friday, they have DJs, Saturdays live music, and Sunday is open mic night for them. Um, it's just a fantastic venue. And Doug, I know that you uh, frequent there quite often. Yes, it's very close to home. I especially like the cucumber wasabi chicken wings. I don't know of any other place that has them. And for me, it just hits the right spot. I also like their fish and chips, which in Westerly is a tough gig. There's a lot of competition for fish and chips, and they do it well. I also plan to check out their open mic. I haven't seen it, been there yet, but it's on my to-do list. And when I do, I will report back. So pool tables, a ton of uh, great seasonal stuff, mini golf and classic car shows, and wonderful things all around the year. As I said, entertainment almost every single day of the week. Just a fantastic venue and unbeatable food at unbeatable prices. Check them out, Boneyard Barbecue, 15 Frontier Road, Ashaway, Rhode Island.